Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today I'm going to answer a question, or address a question, I should say, from Eric Johnson, KD9, I think that is R-N-A, R-N-A. Um, the font makes the R and the N look like an M. Okay, R-N-A. Well, Eric, let's see what you got here. Thanks for all your great info. I have learned much watching your channel. Subscribe. I am installing a 05 vertical. Now, 05 is a company, okay, and they make a variety of antennas. And per the installation instructions, I need to adjust the length of my coax. That surprises me. If it is a 50 ohm a vertical, the length of coax should not matter. Okay. Um, he says his cable is ABR2213 velocity 0 0.066. Um, ABR, I, I'm not familiar with ABR cable, but the velocity factor for the type with the polyethylene in it is 0 0.66. So if you're using 0 0.066 in your calculations, you're going to be off by a factor of 10. Uh, so it's 0 0.66. Uh, more modern coaxes with the foam dielectric have a, a much higher, about a 0 0.85 uh, velocity factor in them. Okay. Um, it says uh, from the lightning arrestor to the cable length is 62 feet. From the lightning arrestor to my rig is an additional 15 feet of the same cable. Then two more three foot LMR 400 jumpers between tuner and amp. Okay, so it's all chopped up into appropriate lines for the different things. Okay, for this question, I'm not measuring the jumpers or gear. Okay, just the two jumpers that equal 77 feet total. The interesting part is my rig expert A55 tells me I have 88 feet. Okay, it's assuming a different velocity factor. It's assuming a velocity factor of about 0.85 or whatever that is. So I'm assuming the lightning raster is altering the calculated length from the rig expert. No. No, it won't be doing that. It will not look different. To do that, it would have to create some sort of a phase disturbance. And it can't do that. It's just not in the design. Okay. Um, that means to meet the ARRL recommended coax length of 101 feet. I have never heard of an ARRL recommended coax length, so please enlighten me. Should I use the physical measurement or the rig expert calculated measurement? Well, as you know, a coax has a uh, velocity factor. So let's take 100 feet of coax here, 100 feet, and it is got a velocity factor of 0 0.66. Light travels more slowly through this. To the get a complete wavelength through, uh, let's see this, make sure I do this right. We're going to go to 66 feet here. This is going to be the equivalent of your 100 feet. Let's do this a little differently. Let's assume that this is, uh, yeah, 0.66. At 0.66 right here, you're going to get a complete sine wave. Whereas, even though it's 100 feet, you're going to get part of the next sine wave over here, okay? And if the velocity factor is 0 0.85, you'll get all the way to here. All right, so if you're using these cables to phase, you're going to have a little trouble there. I have never heard of the ARRL suggesting a um, length of cable. One of the things they have occasionally said is that um, try to avoid a quarter wavelength because that's an impedance transformer from low to high or high to low and 
it can be difficult to turn to tune. Half wavelengths fine. Three quarter wavelengths, and you run into that quarter wavelength problem. Okay, so I need some more information about what's going on. Um, I did notice on the website here, for example, that it referenced or suggested um, recommended coax length 50 feet of RG213. Um, I don't know where that's coming from because the length of coax, if the antenna is 50 ohms and the radio is 50 ohms, the length of the cable does not matter. Okay. If it is mattering, then it is somehow figuring in to the physics of the antenna because it's using the cable length as a transformer, an impedance transformer. And that means that at the base of this thing, it is not um, zero ohms reactivity and 50 ohms uh, uh, non-reactive impedance. So... Uh, I don't know, it shouldn't, your, your coax length shouldn't feed it. Now, um, simply measure the, uh, simply measure, you know, at the, where it goes into your radio, take that out, plug that into the antenna analyzer, and see where that is on there. If it's weird, or something weird is going on, uh, you'll see it right there. Uh, you should see a fairly constant impedance for each band, except 80. 80, of course, is going to be weird. Uh, 40 meters, if it's not a loaded antenna, it'll probably cover the entire band uh, under 2 to 1, uh, certainly under 3 to 1. And then the, you can use the tuner and the radio to cover the rest. So I hope that helps answer or at least clarify uh, your question a little bit here. There are two major types of coax cable and they have different velocity factors. The older type with the tough polyethylene in there that's sort of translucent, hair translucent, it's mostly just white, uh, has a velocity factor of 0 0.66. If you go with uh, the newer cables like uh, RG8X that have the white foam for the center cable, you'll find they have a velocity factor close to about 0.88. Okay, open wire line has velocity factor of about 0.95. Okay, so they've all got different ones. So when they say here use 50 feet of coax, well which is it? The 0.66 or the 0.88 velocity factor? Okay, I think what they're trying to think, what they're trying to say here is probably about if you use 50 feet of coax you'll get the antenna far away enough from the house that you won't have a problem. I have um, from my lightning arresters I have a 50 foot uh, piece of RG213 that is my connector to whatever antenna is under test and I'm always moving that thing around and sometimes connecting a an extender to it and so on. It's about a hundred feet from here out to the step IR. The cable length should not matter. If it does matter, something is weird. Okay, so there you have it. Um, now I would ask you please, if you'd like to support this channel, the one of the best things that you, you can do is subscribe. You're giving your vote of confidence to YouTube that this is a channel worth sharing. And then, of course, if you click on the bell, you'll get notifications, however YouTube notifies you. They don't do it by email anymore. They used to. And I don't know what they do now. Maybe something on uh, uh, some other Google product. In any event, also, if you would like to support this channel financially, please do so. You can go to decastlercom slash support and find a way there that works for you. And until we next meet... 73.